magic or is it madness? I asked the best modern day explorers, take me to the ends of the earth. Oh, what a world we live in. And they said, oh, we can go further than that. We think we know our planet, but there's still a secret world to be discovered. If you go to the right place with the right guide, you just might find a portal into it. The crossing! That's spectacular. This is a bucket list moment. My grandmother used to say, all the best things in life lived on the other side of fear. I sure hope Gigi was right. The brand new series, Welcome to Earth, Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. If some boffins tried to run you through the whole of human history, there's enough to make your head explode. I have been asked to be the spokesman to what you're about to see. National Geographic is skipping straight over the boring bits to bring you the history worth knowing. Like the spy tried for witchcraft, the president with radioactive urine, and the man that sold the Eiffel Tower. Twice! So join us as we get stuck into brand new History the Interesting Bits, tonight at 9 on National Geographic. Team Color, we're here. We'll be ready. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Good start. Thank you, guys. Thank Have a you. good one. All right. You know, last season was, was a tough one. You know, Nick and I, we, we worked our butts off, and it just, you know, we, nothing really showed for it. The recovery from last season begins with brother-sister team on pinwheel and family operation hard merchandise, both netting $17 a pound for their first fish. Fat Tuna brings their Cape Cod bounty into second position, while the legend Moonshine and Underdog's Time Flies make the most out of opening the bluefin season with their first fish. Would you believe that hunting down a giant river monster from ancient times is like looking for a needle in a haystack? It's actually more like looking for a needle in the Sahara Desert. My name is Nizar Ibrahim. I'm a paleontologist and a National Geographic explorer. You probably know a child that is obsessed with dinosaurs. Well, I was that child. I always loved dinosaurs and other animals, but there was something irresistible about dinosaurs. They're like real life dragons. When I was four or five years old, I got my first book and I was hooked. And I decided there and then that I would become a paleontologist. Dinosaurs that people are familiar with are animals like Triceratops here, or T-Rex or Stegosaurus. These are all North American dinosaurs. Some other parts of the world are severely lagging behind, in particular, Africa. It is in many ways paleontology's forgotten continent. And so I decided to unearth Africa's ancient age of dinosaurs. What you see here is the Sahara, uh, one of the driest places on Earth. But 100 million years ago, this was a huge river system. But we're looking for remains of an uh, enigmatic, giant predatory dinosaur called Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus was probably one of the strangest dinosaurs out there. This is one of the most bizarre <laughs> tailbones you can imagine. I've never seen anything like this before. A giant predator with crocodile-like jaws and a paddle-like tail. It was a largely aquatic dinosaur, a river monster, hunting car-sized fish in a river of giants. The Sahara is a very challenging place to work in. Your car may break down in the middle of nowhere. You might get caught in a sandstorm. You'll have close encounters with snakes and scorpions, smugglers and bandits operating across the desert. But it's worth it because the treasures we uncover there help us rewrite the paleontology textbooks. Finding Spinosaurus was an incredible thrill. But we found many other creatures, a real prehistoric zoo, an African Jurassic Park. And I hope that these discoveries from paleontology's forgotten continent are going to inspire a new generation of paleontologists and explorers. An octopus and an underwater archaeologist get into a wrestling match. It sounds like the start of a joke. But for me, it's just part of the job. A lot of my scientific research looks at what people ate or what was traded in the past. These secrets can be revealed through the study of shipwrecks. 
Organic artifacts can be preserved better underwater than on most archaeological sites on land. Once, while excavating a pirate ship in total darkness, I got bumped really hard by a sand tiger shark. I grabbed my spare regulator and blasted air out at it. It swam away and I was safe. A little scarier than the octopus who wanted to play tug of war with me and my water sampling tombs. For shipwrecks from more recent historical periods, we have loads of texts that we can look at. But for wrecks from more ancient periods, we have to piece together things about the shipwreck from the jigsaw puzzle that is the archaeological remains from past cultures. This is where archaeology truly shines. Find out how Nazi forces fought ruthlessly to stop Allied troops from freeing occupied Europe as the end of World War II approached. That's in the new season of Hitler's Last Stand, tonight at 8 on National Geographic. Today on Car SOS, died in the wall petrolhead Tim Shaw. Oh man, 